Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new installment of Club Moffat Talks. I'm excited to be able to join you again. I'm Chris DiPanetta, your intrepid host and instruction librarian. I'm Joseph, and I'm also an instruction librarian. And I'm Ryan. I am the Associate University Librarian for Public Services. Today, we're joined by Ruby Garrett. Why don't you give, your, give us all an introduction? Hello, everyone. My name is Ruby Garrett, and this is the director of The Mosaic. All right. Sounds good. So uh, we're going to actually talk a little more today where I think we're going to get into just what we've been doing recently, because it's been a very <clears throat> it's been a very long last few weeks. And I think maybe we want to <laughs> chill out a little bit, talk about what we've been interested in lately. Um, so, Ruby, you want to go first? Oh, man. Um, just so everyone knows, football started back up again. So <laughs> I'm actually in two fantasy football leagues. So Ooh, two. I, yeah. So one of them is for work. So one is a work league and the other one's just for fun with some friends. And so last week it was pretty intense. This is the start of football. So I'm going to be glued to the TV watching. Are, are you min-maxing things? Are you doing different types of lineups for the two different ones? Or are you sticking to the same ideas for both of them? Um, I tried, but I know the one of the first one that we did, we we did it really early. And then the work one, we had to do it like two days before. And I was like eighth for the first one. And the other one, I was like six or seven. And everyone has different mindsets. Like the one of the first ones, they picked the defense first. And I'm like, why do you pick a defense first? <laughs> yeah. So it was interesting. <laughs> there's a meme i can't remember it off the top of my head but i was i was genuinely going to ask you did you see that spectacle last night and i can't remember what the exact wording is but did you actually see the the brutal massacre against the i think the giants last night yeah i didn't really see it um i was putting my son to sleep actually but i heard all about it and i was like went back up to see what's happening and i'm like whoa what is going on and then everyone of course the cowboys are going to the super bowl <laughs> like, <exactly. laughs> uh, and i'll say the exact same thing i told my wife last night because she is a huge she's a cowboys nut my daughter's wearing a cowboys shirt or her jersey today um, I actually I put her in bed last night and I'll I will say this with 100 percent confidence. No, they're not. And the reason I say that is because they never do. They'll they'll play a killer season and then game one of the playoffs, they will they will lose like they will completely lose all of the traction on their fingers or something like they'll come to that game and say, we're all smooth handed handed now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm rooting for them this year because I'm um, morally obligated to. They won't, and and it's something that we've all had to just come into as a as a um, as a Denver refugee. You just have to um, accept that some truths in this world are readily apparent, like uh, no Peyton Manning, no Super Bowl for the Broncos. Uh, <laughs> Dallas starting off with a good season. Uh, first game, it's going to be the worst one they've ever played. It's a cycle. It, just... it is. It, oh, it's <laughs> like that other. It's like that other thing on the internet you see. It's like the like going great this year, and then like the next one is like oh something's bad, and then it goes all the way around to the last one. Where it's like I'm never rooting for them again. <laughs> Go back up to the top, and it's just yep. nothing changes. Yep, that's football. <laughs> oh yeah. Fun stuff. Anything else? Um, besides that, we're totally different. I'm the mass singer. I watched the mass singer. <laughs> so like football and mass singer. <laughs> I came on again too. So I love I love that's probably the only reality show that I kind of watch. It's kind of a reality show, but other than that, just all the fall TV is coming back. Um, sort of coming back, the ones that we can. Um, so I've been trying to that's how I decompress by watching TV and just zoning oh, yeah. out. <laughs> So you're not on the 90 Day Fiance bandwagon that the whole uh, world is on? No, <laughs> okay, I'm not. Because <laughs> um, the one that fascinates me the most is there's a guy who has a hat for every occasion and we can't like it's just the weirdest thing ever. But uh, there was I remember there was one bit where the the his I don't know if they're married yet, but his significant other like took off his hat and like he ducked beneath the camera and came back with a new one on. Huh. They all those people on that show are real characters, for better or worse. 
<laughs> yep, I did not watch that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're 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 better for it. Yeah, there you uh, go. <laughs> so let's go counterclock or actually no clockwise here from my thing. I don't know if it's the same for everyone else. Ryan, okay. what are you up to? Um, the uh, let's go into nerd territory. I mean sports, but no, no, I'm not. I mean, these I have, days it is. They're I have all, watched like lots of sports. Now. I come from uh, from a family. Uh, my dad's really, really into college football, but I haven't lived with him for 30 years, so I've fallen off the sports bandwagon to some extent. Uh, what I've been watching is the first season of a new Adult Swim show called The Advent My Adventures with Superman, which is interesting because it's a Western show that's taking its 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 tone and its its tropes from. Uh, Japanese anime, which I thought was interesting. Hmm. Also, um, Winning Time, which is the um, the story of the rise of the LA Lakers, has is in the middle of its second season. I've been watching that just because the first off, you you watch these plots and you're like, oh god, they're just making up ridiculous stories, and then you read up and said, oh no, that's what really happened. Okay, and second of all, the the cast is just amazing. They've got a fantastic cast of actors uh doing winning time which again is about the rise of the lakers in the 1980s i actually wanted to watch that i was thinking of watching that so it's very good it's very good it is r-rated i will point that out but again uh, <laughs> even even the newcomers even the new the, new, the cast members who have really are kind of like uh they haven't really done much before this they're all very very good i think yeah i'm, I'm interested in checking that one out too I will move on to Joe. Uh, uh, I had been on my kick where I was trying to get more reading done, and uh, oh, the, <laughs> well, but uh, we we've had discussions about how the last two weeks have just been the longest weeks in the world. Uh, we thought that the last week of August was the longest week ever, and then we came back from the Labor Day weekend. And that four-day week was twice as long as the week before. It was just uh, with our various dramas and 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 crises. Uh, I, so I haven't had the bandwidth to do as much reading as I as I wanted to. So I've been watching some mindless television. That's not fair. It's not really mindless television. I'm watching it in a mindless way. Just you know. Uh, but uh, we finished watching the old series, Veronica Mars, which I had really enjoyed uh, because it reminded me of the uh, old book character, Nancy Drew. And it was that kind of thing that I, I wanted the, you know, the, the school aged investigative person, you know, um, and I, I, I really enjoyed that series, except for the very last episode, which just left me sad and distraught. Um, Right now I'm watching a cartoon that I was told I had to watch before I watched a live action thing. We're mm -hmm. watching the Star Wars Rebels cartoon, uh, which we were told we needed to watch before we started watching Ahsoka. Uh, so we're, we're trying to follow the instructions and, and watch that. Uh, there's a character in that named Ezra, which I thought was interesting. Really? Uh, yeah, it's like, huh. Um, Ezra was my daughter's name. For anyone who doesn't know, yeah, and uh, and 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 so I I did wonder if this you know member of the Rebel Alliance was responsible for your daughter's name. But no, um, no Ezra Pound is a <laughs> is what we did. we named her after Ezra Pound, and our second daughter due in December we're, we're naming Amory, which is primarily um, I think it's. East of Eden? I could be wrong. It's a, a main character in an F. Scott Fitzgerald novel that um that my wife really loves. Sure. So we're we're going we're going literary themes. That's Hopefully two literary themes. Well, you know, you're you, you do work in a library, so yeah. It, yeah, it's appropriate. Yeah. Ah, print is dead. <laughs> How, um, how you, anything you, else, Joe? You, Chris, I think, I, think right. you, you, I think you had mentioned to me something that you had been watching and were definitely going to speak about. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you're throwing that ball to me. Before that, though, um, I did want to say that I've been... Um, my, my semester started again uh, for my graduate degree. I'm in the last chunk 
Um, I really need to get my portfolio done because it's one left and then one after that. And I, I really haven't had time to concentrate on that. But uh, I, I've also been doing some um, trying to decompress. And the way that I've done that is um, anyone who plays any amount of video games is going to have the backlog. And that's when uh, at a certain point you're like, OK, I definitely want to pick up this new video game old like one that i'm either playing now or just bought or whatever happened i still want to get to that but this one's going to take precedent and as time goes on that one you really wanted to play is 40 games back on your backlog and you're like okay i still want to get to all these but i'm gonna to have to save them until later and now with a 20 month old and one coming up there is no more money to be spent on video games. I do not have the I do not have the disposable income for it. So that's when I get the crowbar and like bust open the backlog and it just explodes out because I didn't realize how long I've been building this thing up. Uh so I'm trying to go through like I'm I'm doing a librarian thing almost. I'm going through by franchise order and I'm going by like <laughs> specific titles and specific orders for for each. I'm going through a franchise now called Fire Emblem. It's a Nintendo franchise. Um, it's a strategy game, but not like the kind that you play, Ryan. Like where you have to nav you have to have all the the like your economy, and you have to have all this stuff and all your politics and everything. It is just flat out. Um, here's a giant map. Every movement or every tile is like a movement space or whatever, and you're just trying not to die. Keep all your people alive. And um, I just finished possibly the hardest one it never came over in america this is where uh, things are getting really interesting is that um as a librarian i'm also really into preservation i really appreciate the push that fans have made for archival and video games it's mostly like digitization other types of, of things like that um there are they're saying right now there are somewhere like 90 percent of all video games that have ever been made are no longer accessible they can't be purchased at all like there's no way to not just legally get them there's no way to get them at all so that's where um digital preservation comes in that's where um um enthusiasts and and fans of these things they've translated some that have never come over to the states they've digitize them so it's basically like you're playing it as it was intended uh and i just went through the last one of the last fire emblem games that was never brought over here one of the most grueling experiences i think i've ever had with a video game i got through like i played one for an hour and got my my one of my units that i was like this guy is going to be the one to take out the boss i have to get through it in 30 turns and I got to it and they dealt zero damage and got killed in one hit. And I just kind of like, I felt the air leaving my my whole body. Just, okay, what did I do wrong? Um, about, through about three days of this, five hours of playtime, I beat it, get to the next chapter and realize that a unit of mine had died that I needed to actually beat the game and get the, the real ending. And I said, okay, so... Five hours, and then the however many hours it took to get to that point between the last time I saved my game. Do I give up? And yes. that was like that was three days of me saying, "Do I just I I got to think about something else? I got to think about anything else?" And I just I worked on homework, I did some other things, and I came back to it and I said, "Do I do I give up?" So I finished it this weekend. It was I was so elated. I felt so accomplished. And then it said, "Do you want to play again on hard mode?" And I said, "Nope." And I uh, I deleted it from my from my stuff, and I'm never touching it again. But it is really nice that I'm finally going back to these like these old like ye old video games of history that are no longer accessible, and I'm getting a chance to actually play them, and they're keeping me from having a um, a <clears throat> an urge to buy new stuff, even though there are, there are plenty of video games that just came out that I really really want to touch. But I'm playing these older ones and I'm really enjoying them. And I'm discovering the um I'm discovering new levels of patience I never knew I had. 
but <laughs> that's that's one aspect. That's one aspect of what I've been doing lately. That's that's been a long time. I haven't been on in like two months because I, I had a dentist appointment, I think, last time. So I haven't been on in a while. I haven't been able to talk about it. So other thing that's a little more recent. Um, actually, this is quite a bit more recent. I, I think of this franchise in really old terms now, but um, I recently watched the Netflix live action uh, One Piece. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been keeping up with One Piece since that Ruby, I saw you nodding your head. Did you check it out? Yeah, I didn't watch it, but um, I did see that it came out. And I remember when, when I was younger and I saw like the anime and mm-hmm. popular and it's still popular. And I was like, that's interesting how they're doing live action. That's Netflix is going out there. So that's that's really the weird thing is that Netflix has done a few of these. They did Death Note. It was terrible. They did Cowboy Bebop. It got canceled after a season. I watched some clips of the Cowboy Bebop thing and I thought, you know what? Even if I didn't love Cowboy Bebop already, I think I'd still pass because there were some things that looked really rough about it. Uh, but I've been following One Piece, the manga, for 21 years. I had to go back. I've been reading it since 2002. Um, and after about 2005, it was weekly. So every week I was reading like each new installment. And it's still coming out. Um, it's kind of getting close to the end. But it's still coming out. And I've been keeping up with it that whole time. So... After all this other stuff, after Death Note and Bebop and all these things came out, they were terrible. I saw the like some of the sets and whatever for One Piece, and I thought, barring the history of this studio, I don't know how this can be done justice. So I settled in, put my daughter on my lap, leaned back, and I said, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. I'm going to go in with no hopes whatsoever. I'm not going to go in utterly despaired i'm not going to go in with high hopes and about 10 minutes in i had the biggest smile on my face i was so i was like okay that's monkey d luffy that's roronora zoro these are the characters that i know they are being portrayed with love and respect and adoration by the cast perfectly cast too i i can't even imagine this this show being done better um but it's it's eight episodes right now uh eight or yeah it's eight episodes long covers the first 50 episodes of the anime like 10 or 11 volumes of manga um and they do things that i was i was going in thinking okay they're going to have to like cut some stuff down and make it different and um i don't know they're they're going to have to do some stuff that's going to either rush or this is going to take forever and what they did instead is that um as an example, the first uh, the first major villain is a, a guy named Buggy the Clown. He's a pirate. That's the clown. Um, and the way he's introduced his his first story arc in the manga is like he's taken over a town and he's um, extorting them for money. Um, uh, Luffy's crew comes in, uh, rescues the town. They change it by having their ship get boarded, and when they wake up, they're inside of a big top tent. And instead of it playing out as this like fight in a big like that goes all across this town, instead they're trying to escape from a big top. Uh, one of the arcs after that, they're um, defending a, a village from pirates that are raiding. They turn it into a nighttime slasher villain movie, uh, where they're all inside of a mansion, and the villain of the arc is like chasing people down. He's like an assassin guy with sword fingers um long story but instead of it just having them fight on the beach and having this big brawl happen uh luffy is passed out from eating something bad because he always eats too much um zoro's lost he's he's having his own thing happen because he's always lost and the the chumps in the crew are trying to run away and survive so they completely flip it it's it's like It's watching this thing completely differently. But when they get to the big story beats, I'm like, okay, oh, that's how they're going to get to this point. I know where the story is going, but they're doing it in such a new and interesting way that I'm just, I'm hooked on it. I I just, I really, really love a lot of these changes. I'm not saying they're better. I mean, you go from this giant cast of like dozens of characters by now to like 10 or so um 10 or so named characters that are actually important so cut down a lot but the heart and spirit is totally there it's 
it's like I, I would almost say like if you have any interest in one piece at all just watch the live action and if it really really like hits you somewhere somewhere close maybe try it out or you know wait until season two or better yet just read the manga because you could you could check it out you could check it out through interlibrary loan at Moffat Library. There are 104 volumes and you can get every single one from Interlibrary Loan. So please, if you have any interest, come ask us how to do that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's uh it's it's I, I would say it's about as perfect as you can get. Um I'm so so happy. It, it could have gone it could have gone south a, a million different ways and it didn't. And a, as a longtime fan, I'm just it's I'm I'm just so happy. I'm I'm so happy that it, it was the way it was. Um this episode of Club Moffat Talks is brought to you by One Piece. This is brought to you by Shonen Jump. It's two dollars a month. Go read it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the two big things. Like I was so like I was so excited to just talk about One Piece for the we first could time we could forever. Tell. Um and what's that? We could tell. We could tell you were excited. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I didn't think that it would be in a way that's like, this thing is brand new and fresh. Everyone seems to like it, if not love it. I like it as someone who's really critical of things that I love. Um, I, uh, yeah, I loved it. My wife half paid attention to it, which is really astounding because she like barely half pays attention to the things that she likes. Um, because she, she crochets and does whatever Instagram reels on her phone uh any after as soon as the baby's in bed she just she goes into full relax mode and she actually paid some attention to one piece and i was i never thought that that would ever happen um so i'm going to rewatch it with the japanese dub now because they got all the anime actors back and i'm so excited um and that'll do it for me i'm done i'll <laughs> i'm going to deflate again just <laughs> I say we'll say one more thing. Um, uh, for those of you who are taking stuff in the spring, please take my class. I'm doing a class with Peter Fields on the new weird. And um, hmm? I'm, I'm no, I'm pointing at you. <laughs> you're, you're you're this way. I don't know. I might be pointing at the bottom of the screen. I don't know, but it should be a lot of fun. Again, we've done I've done the weird before with him, but this year we're we're doing the new weird. We're doing people like I don't know Neil Gaiman. Um, China Melville, Kim Newman, John Shirley, Charles Strauss, you know, you know, nobodies. <laughs> For those who don't know, those are all Hugo and Poe and Nebula award-winning authors. Quite big names for that. That's really exciting. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um Oh yeah, I started watching this show called Wellington. No, Paranormal. no, 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 no. We have to go on. <laughs> I started watching a show called Wellington Par Paranormal. It's set in the same universe as uh, what we do in the shadows. It's really funny. Go. <laughs> All right, we should probably have our guest talk. Maybe. <laughs> um, Ruby, please. It, uh, I'll, I'll. Yeah, we'll hand it off to you now. <laughs> All right. So a little. Um, just want to talk about the mosaic. Uh, a little changes of the mosaic. So I loved hearing actually all of what y'all are interested in what y'all are going through right now. That was cool. So, <laughs> um, but the mosaic office right now are going is going through a little bit of a change. So we're just transforming our office direction, and we will love to have everyone's input. And it's not just students, faculty, and staff. So we're doing a couple of things to make sure that we get a wide variety of audiences and input from everybody. So I want to talk about that a little bit of plugs. So, yeah, I did plugs. I'll do some plugs. Okay. Um, so one big thing is we're doing a survey and uh, everyone loves surveys. It's like five minutes, less than five minutes, but we're really trying to understand um, how MSU campus can, in our office, can continue doing the supportive and belonging and community on campus. And so we want to hear from y'all. We want to hear and say, hi, how, do you, um, how did it feel like when you felt belonged or you have a community? What's your community? Um, was there an event that you attended that really made you feel that you were at home on campus? And so uh, we really wanted to hear from everybody. And there is a chance to win $50 gift card. I'm hoping to increase it a little bit, but $50 gift card, um, one of five. So you have a chance to win one of five. Um, and how can we get to this survey? Oh, it is going to be on, um, I know we put it on our social media. There is flyers everywhere that has a survey QR code on there. 
Um, you can even go on Mustang's link and you can go um, on our page and see it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go on that survey and check it out. And you can even come in our office and say, hey, I heard about your survey from the podcast. Um, and uh, like, yeah, you can log on the computer over here. You can do it real fast. So um, really want to hear everybody. Y'all should take it too. Y'all take the Oh, survey? yeah, of course. <laughs> do you mind if I if I add something to that real quick? Um, if, if you you may be cynical about it and think like, oh, it's a survey. Like I'm just going to be adding my voice to a pile. As someone who goes through those surveys from not, not for Mosaic, obviously, but for the library, we really, really appreciate hearing from you. And it does, it does do a lot of good. It helps us a lot to hear from you. So even from my standpoint, yeah, I'm definitely going to take that because I, I know how important those really are. Yeah, be honest as much as you want. You're like, you know, like I'm brutally, I, we told our students, brutally honest, you can. It's any information is better than no information. Uh, so we really want to hear from y'all. Um, we are also doing uh, some town halls. Uh, we have our last one on September 12th, uh, which is tomorrow. Um, wow, time goes by fast. <laughs> tomorrow. I don't know if this will be up by then, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, well, either way, uh, you can come in our office and ask information about like, hey, I heard about town hall and this information. We can give you the information of what's going on um, just to say um, in the know. But focus groups, we have some focus groups that if you want to do a deeper dive into that, like I did the survey, you want to I want to put more information, give you more information. Um, we have uh, faculty and staff ones in different days. December 18th is faculty and September 27th is staff. Um, and for students, it's October 4th. And um, I, those times and everything are on Mustang's link, and they're on our flyers, too. Um, you can come in our office, and we do have little prizes and gift giveaways for y'all um, for, for taking the time, an hour or less, for information from y'all. And um, if you are looking for volunteer hours, especially for students, um, that's going to count off as a volunteer hour, and we can sign off on those. So... But yeah, we're really just collecting information. And if you can't make it to any of that, you can't do the survey or whatever, you can come to our office and just talk to myself, uh, Jamila, Cami, Christina, um, and just say like, hey, I wanted to give more input about community and belonging on campus. And we'll definitely talk to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. That sounds, that sounds really fantastic. Um, what's going on with Mosaic this week or in the near future? Uh and the new future. So besides our town halls and all of that survey stuff, um, I know one of our students is actually trying to do a karaoke night. Ooh, so ooh. Uh, yeah, karaoke. It's I think it's September 28th. Um, it is um, 8 p.m. or 8.30. You can find that on Mustang's link, but they want to do something fun too, the creating the atmosphere of fun. And a lot of our students love karaoke here. So we want them to have another karaoke night. <laughs> uh, so That's yeah. great. Where is that going to be at? Um, either legacy NPR, I think it's legacy NPR, but um, that update will be on Mustangs Link just in case for some reason we couldn't get the room. Cool, sounds sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. So Good. we'll have definitely more updates our students are doing. I know that they want to do a color therapy too, another distressor. Um, I think that's something that they wanted to do. And um, they a lot of our students focus on mental health resources too. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we want to make sure that. Everyone, not just students, faculty, and staff are taking the time to decompress. Uh, and so that was something that we thought of too. Yeah. That's that seems to always be the thing that I that I notice get the most traction is come here and relax. Yeah. Um, because like our therapy dogs, that's that's like the most famous, that's that's the biggest event that we have. It's just come here and pet some dogs and relax. Yeah, it's just amazing. I saw the pictures last time on Instagram and I'm like, oh my God, they're so cute. And everyone loves them. Everyone loves therapy dogs. Yeah, yeah but I showed them to my daughter. She she calls dogs whoop whoops. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're going to do some rebranding this semester. Did you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, that's something that all that information that we'll get will help with our rebrand and hopefully we can work on it. I, our deadline for us um, in our office around November. So after homecoming, after everyone has some fun and everything, um, we kind of look into our office and look at all the information that we received um, and hopefully have our rebrand out by um, spring. So coming back from 
from the holidays and from break and everything, Mosaic will end up probably having another uh, Pancakes and Go. We usually have Pancakes and Go in oh. Stampede Week. Um, we give away free pancakes and everything. Um, and we'll probably reveal our new new rebrand of everything that we're doing. So that's the plan. Cool. You have any sneak peeks, anything that you can share so far, or is it all kind of under the radar at the moment? Under the radar, under the radar right now, I think uh, maybe the Mosaic M will still be out there. Mm -hmm. um, it may change, office change may change a little bit or added more words to it. Um, but right now we're keeping it under wraps until we get all the responses to see if we want to change up anything based off of what everybody has said. We really wanted to have the purpose, like the people design, center design to making sure that we just don't change it randomly. And um, when students and faculty staff come in, we wanted to hear from everybody to see, you know, we're serving the campus. And so we wanted to kind of hear from everybody say, how do you want us to serve? So, <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh-oh sorry <laughs> the sound outside my office um anything else that we want to add well how about this um what made you drawn to this type of work uh me personally so uh let's see i actually started i'm from from wichita falls and um i did my degree here my bachelor's and master's here at msu so I haven't left. <laughs> I'm still an alumni MSU Mustangs. And um, I actually started my work here for student activities. So I did a lot of the activities that we hosted, university programming board, homecoming, stampede week, all of that stuff. And um, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, the cultural observances. And um, we switched, I switched over when they had assistant director position up to Mosaic. Um, I was working with the, um, the student organizations, the cultural student organizations already. Um, and helping them out. And we noticed that we just needed more help with uh, student organizations in general, especially the, the cultural ones. And um, they always, we always love to uh, help them and as well as the graduations, any of the um, graduations, the cultural, or the graduations that we hosted. Um, I remember helping out the Hispanic one, the Needles Commencement Ceremony and um, loved helping out with them. And so I decided to kind of move direction and create communities on campus. Um, our office also serves uh, first-generation students. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a first-gen student. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that they're first-gen. I mean, I didn't know I was first-gen <laughs> until like sophomore, I think. <laughs> um, and so that's another way of um, me serving. And so I just kind of, though I love doing the programs and activities, um, I wanted to help more of the people that are probably underserved that need help a little bit more. Um, I know one thing that's actually new in our office that I'm doing now is the parenting students. So students that are here on campus taking classes that have kids under the age of 18, um, there is a, uh, there is something that we're doing more resources for them. So any of the students that have um, kids and, you know, obviously as you parent, I'm a parent too. And um, if I was taking classes, I would want more of those resources. So if they're our kid is sick or they're having to take a leave of absence for some reason, um, you now have the option or you have a person, which is me, the liaison to make sure that you have those resources. And so if they have anything or leave of absence, or if you're needing, if you're pregnant and you're needing more resources, um, you can, they can talk to me. They just fill out a form to make sure we have the information. Um, and we are making sure that any of the pregnant or parenting students um, have more resources on campus because a lot of our students are taking classes and they have kids at home or they're pregnant um, and they wanna continue their education. So why are we not giving those resources? And so that's something that a big push in our office that we're doing. So pretty soon you'll probably see some more mass messaging, postmaster, <laughs> any all that stuff from our office to say, hey, if you know anybody, fill out this form or send it to them. And so that's one, one big thing that we're doing. So um, me personally, I just love helping the community in general, and then helping our campus community to make sure that our students are successful. I know with faculty, that's something they may, they may not think about because uh, college has changed in the last 30 years. Um, a lot of these uh, faculty members, when they went to college, they, they went, first of all, it was, it was affordable. They were able to go through college um, 
uh, just do college, nothing else, full-time college and stuff like that. And they don't realize that people in college nowadays, it may not be their first concern. They may have, as you said, they may have kids. They may be the primary caregiver for their for their family. They may be taking care of their parents or their grandparents. Mm-hmm. Um, they may be working a job or even two jobs. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, um, again, the school is not necessarily their first priority sometimes. And it's hard for me to explain that to faculty sometimes. And it's nice to have things like Mosaic to help out and fill those 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 places where where um the reality and what a lot of people think that a student should be kind of don't match up. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, every student is different. Um, every faculty and staff person is different too, and they're going through something or they're in different stages of life that we want to make sure that they're still successful, whatever they're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're here for: is make sure our students they have everything they need so they can succeed and thrive. And actually just have a good time here. So it, it sounds like we're really lucky to to have you there uh, championing so many of these causes. That's I, I didn't even know about the, the parenting stuff. Obviously, I'm not a student, so it doesn't apply to me. <laughs> but I know that there are people who may not be so lucky to be in my situation. Uh, that, that's especially if they're students, that's really, really fortunate for them. Yeah, that parenting actually just came out this past summer, and so we're trying to install it. Um, that is actually a new uh, law that mm-hmm. I can mention that there's a new that was a new law that um, all Texas schools have to to do, and so that takes effect in spring. But we're making the um, actually parenting students and uh, students that are pregnant um, actually have early advising. Um, so that's a big plus, especially if they're having newborns around the time in the spring. They can have their schedule already out so they're not having to worry about daycare and all of that stuff. They get their schedule out. They know what their schedule is and they make changes. But that's a big thing that we're really pushing is if you know or if you have a kid, uh, you know, go ahead and fill out this form. You have early advising as soon priority early advising so you can make sure you get your classes and that's one less thing you have to worry about. That's fantastic. And that's one of those things where it's like it's not it's not taking resources for you to apply for it. It's not like it's something that you're going to have to jump through hoops to do. Just apply and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All righty. Well, I know this is going to end up being a really shorter episode, but uh, Ruby, we know that you have some um, some uh, obligations to get to and we don't want to keep you too long. So this is the point where we, you know, I I would I just want to make sure you've got everything that you um that that you're satisfied with everything you've been able to say so far, unless there was something you wanted to add. Anything else you want to plug? I'm trying to think. <laughs> our office does so so much, but we also help make sure that um our students know everything that's going on on campus. So um depending on when this airs, family weekend may be coming up. <laughs> That's coming up next mm-hmm. weekend, September 22nd, 23rd. Um, yeah. Oh, we'll be out of time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, just, just so you know, and so people know, uh, we do a thing where we add closed captionings to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, they're not completely accurate. Mm-hmm. So it takes a day or two of editing. So usually two or three days after the day is recorded, is when it'll get released to the public. Uh, so, so there is a delay. So you mentioned something that's happening tomorrow, and the podcast won't be out before then. Uh, but uh, t- today's Monday, so Wednesday, Thursday, probably. Yeah, family weekend is next weekend. So All right, cool. it'll be out. So make sure that you come out family weekend hosted by the Wellness and Rec Sports. Um, and it's for everybody. So faculty, staff, students, bring your friends, family, uh, come out, have a fun time. So we love to, to pro- support them. And any of the other workshops that you see, t- like task management, time management, I'm trying to think of everything that's going, <laughs> going on. Mm-hmm. And besides our office, I think all the resources are super important, but I would definitely say go on Mustang's link. Um, if you don't know how to go on, go on the portal. You'll see what's happening in our office. You'll see what's happening on every everywhere on campus. Uh, that's a big plug for um, for, for campus in general. So, 
I think that's um, it, but <laughs> we'll update on Mustang's link. <laughs> is there also a website on the uh, MSU page that they can visit so to get all of your information? Yes. If you um, go on the website and just search Mosaic, um, you'll see just pop us pop up. You can click on it. It has all the information about our rebrand too, as I mentioned. So um, if you didn't get to catch most of it, or if you wanted to learn more, um, there's all the dates on there, um, the links to the survey, all of that. So it's right there on the website. Fun stuff. Uh, I if, if you have a social media presence, I'll definitely end up following there if I'm not already. Yes, yes. At MSU text underscore mosaic. Blue. All right. Yeah, <laughs> on, his, that, on Instagram that Facebook. Should be, should be easy enough to find, but you never know. Uh, so after or before we sign off, uh, Joe, do you want to cover some of the, the events that are going on on campus and I, in the I, community right now? I sure I, I will. And and you know what? I don't have my paper to. to oh, to no. I, I have it up here on my screen, but I don't have. Oh, my paper. I am so ashamed of you. Joseph. Do you have any loose pages and then you can edit I, that out uh, <laughs> that it's not the real thing? You're supposed to be killing hey. trees. Do you not know that? I'll, I'll I'll find another reason or way to do that. Uh, okay, uh, the Wichita Falls Public Library is hosting DIY Kids for children ages six to eleven on Wednesday afternoons at four thirty. Uh, and my my understanding is they're doing just various crafting projects. Uh, the Wichita Falls Museum of Art is hosting Live at the Lake on September twenty first with the G Top Band. Uh, the next After Hours Art Walk will be downtown Wichita Falls on October 5th. Uh, we'll be hosting a Meet at Moffat workshop on October 10th at noon, where our own Chris will join Ashley Hurst to discuss how the library and TASP can support students on campus. Uh, then that evening on the 10th, the music series at Aiken will bring you the Nakamatsu Trio, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry if I did not. Um, and of course, Moffat Library's Halloween event, Rooftop Heroes and Tabletop Terrors. Uh, Rooftop Heroes begins at noon on October 31st. We're going to have speakers and special presentations discussing the history and uh, evolution of superhero costumes, figure drawing for comics and games, the history of role playing, anatomy and physiology of superheroes, German superheroes, the Super Friends cartoon, and much more. We'll also have a contest, a costume contest. And then that evening, we're teaming with the Gaming Club for Tabletop Terrors, which is our annual night of board games and spooky contests. Uh, if you'd like to have more information about any of those things that I mentioned, you can look at uh, discoverwichitafalls.com slash events or the MSU Texas homepage. If you have something that you'd like us to mention, uh, just send us an email, library at msutexas.edu. Oh, can I mention two events that I know it's upcoming? Yes, absolutely. Uh, right. The community. Um, so it's actually this weekend, so you'll be able to make it. It is, there's two events happening at the same time. Um, it is the Jamaica, so Hispanic Heritage Month is happening the 15th, um, through October 15th. And the Jamaica is at the Guadalupe Church. Um, you can go on Facebook. They actually had a parade this past weekend. Um, so start of the kickoff of it and it is free. They just have little tickets there. You can buy food and everything and supporting the church. Um, there's also El Grito and it's another kickoff for Hispanic Heritage Month downtown on Indiana. And it is hosted by the um, Rubin House of Classics. And so they have a car show. They have uh, music going on. They have a, the artwork and everything like that. So that's a new event that they're hosting and hopefully they host it more. But I think it's five dollars for admissions, but I think there is a student and military discount. Okay. And I think it is on Instagram and Facebook that students and faculty staff can look and see. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a really fun time. So hopefully Saturday and I think it's going to rain, but don't let the rain discourage you from going mm -hmm. and checking out these community events because that's why they're here. They're going to have so much fun. After these last two months, I would really hope that people aren't dissuaded by rain for an yeah. event. <laughs> Please come out, support support these programs and the rain. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, absolutely, Ru Ruby, we're 
so excited to have you on and we were so happy to be able to talk with you if there's anything else you want us to plug we can definitely put uh most of those links if we as long as we got uh, got them we can put those in the description of this video down here as soon as it gets posted uh anything else that you want us to plug just let us know and we'll throw that up as well Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And it was fun listening and talking to all of y'all. <laughs> Absolutely. Any other time you want to come back on, you just let us know and we'll definitely have a place for you. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. And for everyone else out there, thank you for listening and we will see you on the next one. Bye.